Hey everybody, Jared here, helping you build on Abstract. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to get started using the Abstract Global Wallet SDK by building out a simple Next.js application where you connect using the Abstract Global Wallet and submit transactions with a paymaster to create a gasless experience. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do as an example is just create a new Next.js project and I'll speed run through this just in case you've already got one and are looking to integrate the abstract global wallet into it. So we'll give our project a name. Let's just say, hello, AGW. I'll use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind. I'll just accept all of the defaults here and go through and create this project. Now we've created the Next.js app. I'll just quickly change the directory into it and we can get started installing the AGU dependencies. So for Abstract Global Wallet, we're just going to run npm install and we're going to install four different packages here. The first one is going to be abstract foundation slash ag react. The second one is going to be wagme. The third one is going to be vm and you want to make sure you have at least version two here. So I'll say at 2.x. And the final dependency that we want to install is React Query or Tanstack Query. So we'll say at Tanstack slash React Query and hit enter here. So this is going to install the React package. And then these three are just kind of further dependencies that you would likely want to use if you're using a React. You actually don't have to install these if you don't want to, but it is recommended if you're building these applications out. Once those packages are installed, you can open it up in your text editor. I'm gonna be using cursor for this video. And when we open this up, you can see we get a simple Next.js application. And if we jump into package.json, you should see the React package installed and optionally the three other dependencies that we showed in this video, if you are following along. So essentially the way that the React package works, if we take a look at how it is actually implemented, inside of our node modules here, you can see that it exports an abstract wallet provider component. And if you've ever worked with a package like Wagme before, this will be extremely familiar to you. Essentially, all we need to do is wrap our application in this provider, and then we can use all of the hooks and components within the application wherever we want, since the provider is providing us with that context that we can read anywhere throughout the application and therefore use any of the hooks available anywhere in our application as well. So essentially we have one job and that is to wrap our application in this provider component. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder called components. And within this, we'll create a new file and we'll just call it abstract provider. The first thing we're gonna add since we are using Next.js app router is just use client within this file. And then we're going to import the abstract wallet provider from the at abstract foundation slash AGW react package here. So the abstract wallet provider again is that component that we just looked at. And now we just need to export as cursor is suggesting here, we need to export a wrapper component. To do that, all we need to do is say export default function abstract provider. And we're going to accept the children as arguments here. So the children is basically the rest of the application. So we're gonna provide the whole application as children here, as it's suggesting, and just wrap those children in this provider. So then we just return the abstract wallet provider component wrapping those children. And we can close off that component here. As you can see, it's saying we're missing a config object as the required property. So we can say const config and the two optional, uh, one optional and one mandatory fields that you must provide in the config here is the testnet flag and an optional transport, which is if you want to provide a custom RPC. So for us, since the time I'm recording this video, we only have testnet. I'm just going to say testnet is equal to true and we close that out. So then all we need to do is just say on the actual component, config is equal to that config object we just created and close that tag out here. Now that was our abstract provider component. All we need to do is jump into the layout here and wrap the body of the application, which is essentially everything within the application inside of that abstract provider. So we exported it called abstract provider. So let's simply say import abstract provider from at components slash abstract provider here. And then all we need to do now is just wrap the application in that provider encompassing the body within this provider here. That's it, we are ready to use all of the available hooks from the A React package. So let's jump into the homepage here. Let's clean all of this up. Let's just go ahead and nuke the whole page so we can give start from a, a clean state here. 
And what we're gonna do is let's just say, uh, we'll give it a simple title saying, hello abstract. And we're gonna have a simple button here. And we'll come back to what that button does in a second. What we can do now is import the login function from the use login with abstract hook. So here we can say const login log out is equal to use login with abstract. And that is going to be imported on line number one here from the AU React package. And we'll just do the uh, parentheses here and clean up the formatting a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and get rid of these styles to make it very bare bones here. So now what we wanna do is we have the hello abstract and we have a button that says connect. All we wanna do is say when this button is clicked by saying the on click, we wanna run that login function. So we'll say on click is equal to login. And there we have integrated, I'll format a little bit for you and we can run the application and see what this looks like. So I'll jump back into the terminal, clean this up. And all we need to do is run npm run dev and visit localhost 3000 in the browser. What you'll see is we get this ugly little error here, but all we need to do is jump back into the page component, but on line number one, let's just add use client here and that will fix our little issue. So here we have our application. I'll go ahead and zoom in a whole lot for you so you can see it. We have our H1 hello abstract and a connect button here. So obviously you wanna style this, but I just wanna show you the bare bones, minimal implementation that you can have. Click on the connect button. And what this does is prompts the user to sign in using this pop-up that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my email here and I will confirm that off screen with the code provided. You'll see a success message. And here we have our abstract global wallet created for us. So you can see this is going to be the abstract global wallet smart contract that we're going to connect to the application with. We'll go ahead and click approve and we are now in a connected state. So jumping back into our code editor here, the reason that I showed you why we installed Wagme and the other dependencies like VM and React Query is because you can actually freely use all of those libraries as you would normally just with this abstract global wallet connected. So for example, we can use the use account hook from Wagme to showcase the connected wallet, which is the abstract global wallet smart contract. So to do that, we can say const is equal to use account. And we're going to import this on line number four here from Wagme, close those parentheses. And we can see within this, we have address here. So we'll say a little P tag to just show the connected to, and we'll show the connected wallet address. Give it a little format. And now if we revisit the localhost 3000, what we can see is that in the disconnected state, there is no address here. We click connect. And since we already went through that signup process, it just easily connects us again to the same application. And here is the address of our abstract global wallet smart contract. So what about submitting transactions from the connected contract? So to do that, let's add a button here and an async function. So we'll say async function submit transaction and we'll just leave it empty for now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna import another hook from the a React package and that is going to be called use contract right sponsored. So this is essentially an extension of the use contract right hook which comes from Wagme and it extends it to utilize the feature of native paymasters that abstract offers. So we have another video on the channel if you're curious to learn more about building your own paymasters, but I'll show you how you can create a gasless transaction for your users from the connected abstract global wallet. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna deconstruct the right contract sponsored value out of the use right contract sponsored hook and we can see if we dive into this, exactly what's happening under the hood if you are curious. But for this video, we'll just show you a simple example of minting an NFT using this Paymaster smart contract that I have deployed. So what we need to do here is say const hash, which is the transaction hash that will result from this transaction here, is equal to await right contract sponsored. And we can open up these curly brackets to see what we need to provide here. So we need to provide the ABI of the smart contract. For me, I'm just gonna pass a little bit of the ABI just to get this video to work. But obviously in a real world, you would probably wanna provide the actual compiled ABI of your smart contract here. So for us, I'm just gonna import the pass ABI function from VM, which again, is why we installed these packages because they do have these helpful functions for us. The next thing we need is the, whoops, address of the smart contract, which for me is gonna be the address of this simple NFT collection that I have deployed. So I'll copy and paste that from off the screen. 
The other thing we need is the function name, which is going to be mint to go ahead and mint that NFT. The arguments to that mint function is firstly the address to mint it to. So for us, that's going to be the currently connected wallet address and then the quantity of NFTs that we want to mint. So for us, that is going to be number one in the form of a big integer. Then we just need to provide the address of the Paymaster smart contract. So I have deployed a simple Paymaster smart contract at this address here. I'm just going to copy and paste that off screen. And the final thing we need to provide along with the Paymaster is the optional input to that Paymaster. So I don't want to provide any input. So I'm just going to call a function called get general Paymaster input here. And that is going to come from, again, the VM package on line number five here. And what we need to provide to this is an object with the inner input property. And for that, we're just going to provide zero bytes with the format zero X. So let's go ahead and clean up some little errors here. You can see this is actually not a async function. It doesn't look like, however, it does also come with a write contract sponsored async. So let's import that instead, since I prefer this async await syntax. And then what we need to do is replace this with write contract sponsored async. And now it's complaining that the address might be undefined since we might call this function when the address uh, or the wallet has not yet been connected. So we'll just say, if there has no wallet address been connected, we'll just return out of the function. Otherwise we'll continue on with this mint. And then we'll just simply console.log the hash that is returned. So we can look that up inside of the block explorer. Perfect. So now we just need to add a button that calls this mint NFT function. So we'll say button on click is equal to submit transaction, which is a name of the function that we just created. And we'll say, instead of submit transaction, we'll say mint NFT. You can see again, the styles are not the prettiest, but we do have our connect button. So we'll go ahead and connect. We are connected to this smart contract wallet address. And now we can go ahead and click mint NFT. And if we open up the console here as this pop-up shows up, which you can't currently see. So I'll, I'll swap scenes so you can see this. Here we go. So this is the sign message. So this is the information about the transaction that we're going to submit. Go ahead and click sign and continue and get that success message here. If we jump back into the terminal, I don't know why it's all blue, but you can see <laughs> we have our transaction hash here. So it was successful and we can go ahead and look this up on the block explorer. So if we search up the transaction, you can see successfully we called the mint function from OXB677 and the gas fees was sponsored by the paymaster here. So if we click into the from address OXB677 here, this is actually a smart contract and you can see it has 11 transactions. So this is the same smart contract that I've used on different applications to do different activities in my testing uh, using that Twitter login or the email login, sorry, for this smart contract wallet. So all of the different applications that I've tested and, and accessed using my email that I showed you in this video is actually this smart contract wallet here, which is the abstract global wallet. So you can see two minutes ago, we executed this transaction hash, which was the mint and that came from OXB677. And if we go back to our application, this is the wallet that it was connected to. So this is just kind of showing you, hey, the wallet that we're connected to and that we're using to submit these transactions is actually the smart contract, specifically the abstract global wallet smart contract that got created for us. So that's a quick little video on creating a new project, installing the abstract global wallet SDK, adding the login functionality to your application, and then submitting transactions from that abstract global wallet smart contract. If you want to learn more, there will be a link to the full documentation in the description, as well as the Discord server for you to get any help if you got stuck at any point. With that said, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.